Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Film Talk with Jordan Ramirez. I am your host, Jordan Ramirez. And our guest today is podcaster Kellen Herr. And the film that he has chosen for today's episode is Legend from 1985, starring Tom Cruise, Mia Sarah, and Tim Curry. Uh, it's good to see you on the program. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be on. Oh, thank you. So uh, now to get things started. So um, <clears throat> the first question that I want to ask you is, um, why did you pick this movie and where did you first see it? Um, where did... I can't tell you where I first saw it. Okay. Or when. Because, <laughs> but I'm an 80s kid, so... Like I just remember this movie from like when I was really young, and um, it's one of the movies where I could turn on, and I could t- I still fall in love with it every time I watch it, <laughs> and I can never grow. It just never gets old for me, and every time I watch it, there always seems to be something new I'm seeing in it. Mm. Okay. Um, so was there anything you took from this film, like something that stood out to you, that's something that uh, you would say watch over and over again if you uh, rewatch this film? Um, as a kid, I think that when I first saw it, what I liked about it was um, that fantasy. You know, yeah, your um, your goblins, your uh, yellow fairies, mm-hmm. yeah, your... Um, <clears throat> you had Darkness, who Tim Curry played the big uh, dra- the dragon, the big uh, devil. Um, <laughs> yeah. But as I got older, when I watched it, my views kind of changed because the more I'm familiar with storytelling, I realized that um, in terms of story arcs, this is the one of the only movies I know of where um, Lily, played by Mia Sarah. Mm-hmm. She's not the main character, but I, in my opinion, I think she has the bigger arc than Tom Cruise, mm. who's the main character. Because yeah. when she's in the movie, when they start the movie, she's very, um, she's very young. She's not very naive. She's very selfish. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but as she goes to the movie, she starts changing because her interaction with what she did, um, her. Her actions that cause the winter coming in, mm-hmm. hurting the unicorn, causing the winter, um, that guilt that comes in that she didn't feel before because she was a spoiled princess. Mm-hmm. So now she's growing from that guilt. And then at the end of the movie, um, with a spoiler alert, <laughs> um, okay, she has a chance for redemption, and she takes it. Because if you watch from the, the beginning of the movie, she's very selfish. So she very well could have not taken that chance of redemption. Mm. You could have taken all the power that Darkness um, was willing to give her. All mm. the money, all the power, all the beautiful things. And it would have been fine with that. Mm. But she took that chance of redemption to say, hey, I messed up. I can really make something different. And she takes that redemption where Jack, played by Tom Cruise, mm-hmm. doesn't really have a character arc. No, he doesn't. Yeah, it... he he's exactly the same person at the end of the movie mm-hmm. that he started from the beginning. And I found it interesting because I can't think of any other movie where the sub-character has the character arc, but the main character doesn't. Hmm. Yeah. Um. And I know that um, this was a, I know this is the same thing. Uh, do you have a favorite scene or actor who stood out to you? Um, uh, do you like, who, do you think Mira, Mia Sarah's performance to you uh, was the one that stood out to you the most in the film? Or was there any other actor that stood out to you? Um, Tim Curry. Uh, <laughs> yes. Tim Curry because it took me until I got older to mm-hmm. realize that, that was Tim Curry. Mm-hmm. Because when you watch all his other movies, yeah, he's such a fantastic actor. Yeah, that I know that he's behind the mask, mm-hmm. but you could not <clears throat> see him. You can't see his personality through that mask because 
he was so in that character that I was I didn't know that was him until I got older. I was like, wow, that's Tim Curry. <laughs> that's incredible. And for him, he took that role and he was so convincingly darkness that that was incredible. That was amazing acting. Mm-hmm. I I thought so too. I thought um, when he was in the makeup and also later when he is sort of revealed to uh, Mia Sarah's character, uh, Lily, mm-hmm. I thought he was also uh, terrific in that performance. And I know that in the film, he's portrayed as this a large red devil uh, character that I don't know when I saw the film, I thought it was like the, the story between good and evil, light and dark uh, heat and cold. Um, That's what I took away from this film as I was watching it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So um, do you have any like anecdotes, maybe like stories of maybe somebody who you saw the movie with, or maybe uh, any, anybody, you know, who has any memorabilia uh, related to this film? I don't, um, unfortunately, I don't. Uh, it's just one of the movies where I'm willing to call it one of my favorite movies because it brings up so much childhood. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Um, so anything that, so I know that this is the theatrical cut that I watched. Um, did you, were you familiar with the director's cut of this picture? I know that it was one, but from what a lot of people that saw it, um, they recommend me not watch it mm. because they said that it doesn't add anything to the value of the movie. Mm. And so if you love the movie, it's actually more likely to take away from the movie. Mm. I because see. I think um, the only thing that changed believe what I was told was really the ending mm. and because the ending it wasn't great it mm. wasn't like um for example um I'll throw in a whole different movie with Lord of the Rings okay uh watching their extended cut it adds in so much more to the story mm-hmm. that from what I was told <clears throat> that when you watch the extended cut that was the movie that Peter Jackson really made mm-hmm. and the, the theater cuts were the ones that he had to cut it so that they were willing to show at the theaters. Mm. So that was different because you're watching a movie that suppose was the way it was meant to be. Mm-hmm. But uh, when you watch the director's cut from this, what I've been told is that it doesn't add anything to the story. It doesn't tell more of the story. It doesn't add to the characters. It doesn't so all it does is it just changes the ending mm, I see. in a way that doesn't really add to Lily's character arc. It doesn't add to um, Jack. Mm-hmm. And you already seen that um, Darkness doesn't die. He's just, he still survives. Mm. So it doesn't add to that. Um, so it doesn't make, it just changes it. It doesn't make it better. Mm. Well, I know that's the true that's true for some of the other films that Ridley Scott had directed uh for like example Alien Blade Runner mm-hmm. or Gladiator or any of those other pictures that he directed he always had like his uh cut version of like uh, a film that was released right. theatrically but he does it differently with uh his cut. Um but yeah um so the other thing that I noticed as I was watching this film besides it being uh, a simple good versus evil type story where um, I liked the makeup effects by Rob Bottin of the goblins, mm-hmm. the fairies, the elves, and everything else in this film. And I thought they were very um, interesting for this time period. I agree. Um, and I think that, you know, we would live in a world of heavy CGI. Mm-hmm. And you can still watch this movie and it doesn't look cheesy no you know? it, it doesn't oh uh, like, like you said the goblins looks amazing mm-hmm. una the fairy she looks amazing um uh, the unicorn looks amazing darkness mm-hmm. looked completely that was just a such a beautiful character mm-hmm. and that movie was made in i believe it was 1985 yeah 85 so coming on to almost 
next year will be 2025. Mm-hmm. We're talking about what? Um, nearly 40, 40 years? years. Yeah, nearly 40 years. So for that effects to still be amazing 40 mm-hmm. years later, mm-hmm. that is an amazing job because you don't see that in a lot of movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, movies from back then, if you, a lot of times you throw them back on and you watch it, you're like, you see a lot of the differences in the like they don't look as good Mm -hmm. you can see the it's very clear that it's a rubber suit um Mm -hmm. it's very clear that the blood is ketchup (laughs) so you know Mm -hmm. a lot of the effects are they don't live to this period but with that movie everything is great and that's why for me it remains one of my top movies because the story is still very relevant. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, good versus evil is never going to not be relevant mm. uh, for as long as we live. That's going to be a plot line that's going to be here forever. Mm. Um, the fact that the makeup and prosthetics and everything is still so beautifully done and relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, Tom Cruise did an amazing job. Mm-hmm. Mia Sarah was like one of my childhood crushes. I, I thought she was so beautiful, and <laughs> I still do. You still see a picture of her. Um, amazing job for two people that were so young. And once we get, once again, we go back to uh, Tim Curry doing an amazing job. And there was nobody in this movie who I watched it was like, who I thought that they. Because of them, they ruined the movie. Mm. It was everybody does such a, an amazing job, and that's so rare because this, you know, it's with such a big cast. Mm-hmm. Um, there's bound to be somebody who's not going to do a good job. Yeah, or miscast. <laughs> so in this movie, everybody was just cast so well, and really Scott did such a beautiful job, like mm. directing. And I don't know who the casting director was, but they uh they absolutely deserve a lot of credit for mm-hmm. doing an amazing job too. Yeah, um, I think the casting director. I don't think I looked up their names, but there were three. Um, one was in London, the other two were in New York and California. Um, for the other three, um, the other thing I noticed because this was a fantasy film, the whole place, uh, the whole setting in the film as I watched it. It largely took place in like a forest and Mm -hmm. the it largely took place in the forest. And it was like it they were the two they were the two characters in the film. And there was one other character, which I don't think she was really that important to the story, uh, Nell. And she was only in like maybe one or two different sequences in the picture, but she wasn't that relevant. Um, But yeah, I when I saw it, it was like you have two human characters plus the elves and the fairies and darkness and his goblins and. To me, I don't know if this would be relevant, uh, but it felt like the story of creation, in my opinion, like the sort of uh, biblical story. But um, that's just my opinion of how I saw it from uh, my perspective. I've um, uh, right, I've um, I read that before. I've read that uh, perspective before. Um, I think that um, I didn't see it that way because. I'm not um, I'm not religious. No, no, no. I so I, agree. Uh, I didn't, and I'm not saying you have to be religious. No, or no. that this movie was based on religion, whether it is, it was or was not. Um, only because I've been growing up, I've always read um a lot of books. You know, your Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe, and mm-hmm. Wizard of Oz. So I've always been into fantasy movies, so I guess movies and books, so I guess I never um, associated with it. I just took it as it was. Yeah. Um. So that's just, but that's just me. Um, yeah. But I do understand your um, that viewpoint, because mm-hmm. you're right, it is you have your male, you have your female uh, representative of Adam and Eve, Mm-hmm. And Darkness very obviously looks very much like what 
Satan, the devil, mm -hmm. has always been portrayed to look. I mean, yeah. two horns. He has his, you know, his cloven feet. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, but I found it a little interesting that darkness in the movie, while he looks like what the devil is supposed to look like, he actually answers to somebody else. Yes, he does. Because at the end of the movie, he says, Father, save me. And mm. I found it interesting because throughout the whole movie, you think that darkness is the ultimate evil. Mm -hmm. um, because he has so much power. He has so much control of everybody. But then you get to the movie, he says, Father, save me. Meaning there's a higher power that he answers to. Mm -hmm. So who is this other evil being possibly evil being i'm assuming it's evil being because otherwise why would they be allowing darkness to have so much control mm. um so who is he answering to but i want to throw it out there that i really hope um they don't do a remake of this no no i i would be I mean, we we live in a time where basically Hollywood studios are now using IPs. They're using intellectual properties to take something that, I mean, I'm I'm part of this too. I'm part of the group of people who are against uh, using taking something that was already good, but you're making it worse because you're not mm -hmm. because maybe uh, whoever owns the rights to this movie, they didn't understand the story before they decided to remake it. That's my understanding of it. So I agree with you that they should never remake this film. I mean, they're already thinking about remaking other properties, which I thought I don't want to see them because they they don't look that good to me. Correct. I agree. Um, I think remaking is not bad on its own. For example, if you're taking... um a really old movie mm -hmm. and you feel that you can take a movie and for example you're doing legend um you're gonna remake legend but you're saying you're you're deciding i want to focus on more of darkness's view where did darkness come from i'm okay with that because you're taking the story or you're adding to the story on a viewpoint that we didn't get before. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're not taking away from the movie, you're, but you're adding to it. I'm okay with that. As long as a, the, a lot of the creative characters, so the, say, really, like really Scott, um, the producers, they, the writers, they have some sort of viewpoint and say in it. Mm-hmm. So you're respecting the story, but you're adding to the story. Mm -hmm. That I'm okay with doing a remake in that aspect. But if you're just doing a remake because you want to make money from it, mm -hmm. um, or you, you're, not, you're not showing respect to the original project, the original story, then it doesn't deserve a remake because you're not doing anything for the for a film that was just already so beautiful on its own. And then if you A, you're gonna just, just shoot it shot for shot, doesn't make you may as well keep the original if you're just gonna do shot for shot. Mm. Um if you're not if you're going to flip the genders, it wouldn't really make too much sense because it's not really organic. No. Because um Lily works as a selfish girl, selfish spoiled girl mm -hmm. who learns that she, there's more to the world than her, her, her world, mm -hmm. being a princess. It works so much better as Lily than as a male because as a male going into that, he doesn't gender roles. He comes off looking like an asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because he's just now he you have a selfish male, he looks like an asshole. Mm -hmm. Where with Lily, because she's a girl, she looks naive. Mm -hmm. So gender roles, you switch them, you change a lot of the dynamics. Mm. So it won't work the same way. Yeah, it 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 does add to 
And I also like that Lilith or Lily, excuse me. I get Lilith mixed with Lily. <laughs> but it were you know, that's interesting that you just made that mistake because you uh, you bring it back to what you said with the um how it can represent the Bible. Yeah. Lilith was a major player in mm -hmm. um the Bible, not the yeah. Bible, but in the uh biblical story. Yeah. As a lot of people say that uh Lilith was Adam's first wife. Mm. So yeah. it's interesting that you just slipped in that little bit. <laughs> I, I think it was accidental. I don't think it was then I don't think it was done on purpose. Um <laughs> but but yeah, I, I could see where that comes in now. Um but yeah, uh when you mentioned that it, it would have been done in a different perspective, I mean or trying to avoid uh, remaking scene by scene. I mean, that's the same thing with what Disney's been doing. Disney's been mm -hmm. remaking a lot of their own properties. And it's almost like when I rewatch some of their live action movies, it's the same story. Or they try to add in some new sequences to make it uh, more uh, relevant in the present times. And I feel like you don't make it really work with that, uh, with those remakes. I don't. Right. I mean, the last remake I saw was Aladdin. And then after that, I was like, I'm I'm done watching the remakes because I, I think there's nothing that is interesting. It's basically remaking the same story. You're just using the same plot lines. You're trying to make it more relevant and funny by being more, I guess, diverse and, or as you say, uh, doing something different with the gender perspective. Um, but I, that's what I that's how I see it as. But as you mentioned, um, if it were done uh, for this movie Legend to have a gender reversal of having uh, an arrogant male character instead of the uh, female character, I think it would add little to the story and just make it uh, a problematic film from my viewpoint. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we've seen that happen where the gender role movies, I can't think of anything at the top of my head, but um, and it, it, has taken, it took away from the movie. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's harder, especially for People, especially for me, who grew up watching the original, mm -hmm. then you had to watch the remake. You still remember the original. Um, yes. It works better for my nieces and nephews mm. who are five or six who never seen the original. So the remake is their version of the original. Mm. That works for them. Mm -hmm. But you really have to wait for our generation to have passed on for the remakes to really work out. Mm -hmm. Because if the generations that watch the original are still alive and they watch the remake, it's not going to work. Because like you said, um, I tried watching Aladdin. Yeah. And I realized, why am I watching this? Because I've already seen Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was the same with The Lion King. I mean, I remember seeing the trailer for The Lion King and it just didn't work because when I, I think I overheard somebody when I was at class at USF saying, what's going to be so different about this one? And I'm like, there's nothing different about it. It's the same story. It's just, they only had brought back one cast member who I thought, I don't think he should be back for the remake, James Earl Jones. <laughs> and I mean, it just didn't work. I don't think that was that was not what uh, made me say I want to see remakes like for Disney properties. I mean, if it's something original or if it's something different, I would say, yes, I would watch it. But if it's remaking, as you said, something that is so precious to you for uh, my generation or anybody else's generation, uh, to me, it's something I don't want to see. I mean, as you mentioned, uh, if somebody younger than me saw the remake as the original, I mean, that's that's how they see it. But for me at my age, I'm like, um, I don't see it that way because what they're watching is a remake that's different from the film that I saw when I was younger. Mm -hmm. well, um, I agree. Um, that's where it's a little tricky. And I didn't bother watching The Lion King. Um, no. I got through the scene where, um, I can't remember the monkey's name, um, where the monkey raised Simba. Oh, uh, uh, in the in the Lion King? Right, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, and uh, I saw that. Rafiki. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, I remember I saw it up to that part and I remember thinking, you just did a shot for shot. Yeah. It, of it... The cartoon. And so I started thinking, 
if you just did a shot for shot at the beginning of the scene, that I feel like the rest of the movie is gonna be shot for shot. It is. It it does and feel that way. It's not gonna be worth my time watching because I've already seen like we already, we uh reiterated I've already seen the movie, mm-hmm. the original. There's no point in me be watching this because it's not adding any value mm. to the story or my life. So no. it doesn't make sense because I don't feel like I'm missing anything by not watching it. Mm-hmm. I I mean they well the only times they try to remake um older films and like from uh I know they're just finishing up wrapping up on uh, Snow White for Disney and I'm like I don't want to see it because I already watched the original. Why should I watch a property that they own that they want to remake? And I'm like I'm I'm done with it. I'm I'm not wanting to see any more of that you know um i will admit though um the one remake that i don't mind i know a lot of people don't won't agree with me okay is willy wonka and the chocolate factory oh oh you oh the the one with timothy chalamet yeah i don't mind the charlie and the factory charlie chocolate factory remake Mm -hmm. because from what i've been told is that the remake charlie and chocolate factory actually falls closer to the book than willy wonka did yeah. So for that, when they did the remake and they follow the source material closer because the original actually didn't follow the source material, for me that remake works mm-hmm. because you do have now you do have two different stories, mm. and that works for me. Yeah, I mean it was the same for me too because I remember the first time I saw Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, I saw it on television. Uh, actually, the first time I saw it was on VHS. Uh, but I only remembered seeing like the first musical number that they did, which uh, was later turned into a popular song. And then as I watched it, it was like some of the elements they did get right, but the others I felt like it it didn't look like the book that I read. It looked more like a Broadway musical uh, mm-hmm. than than the book. But I do agree with you that I like the remake better. And as you said, people may not agree with me on this one um, because I thought it added because it followed closely to the book when I read it. And there were some elements that were brought back in this version. But the only thing that I remember they added for this movie was Willy Wonka's backstory that he was a, yeah. Yeah. Before he was a chocolatier, he was the son of a dentist and he was, he had these big braces that he, (laughs) that uh, he didn't, uh, that he was not allowed to eat chocolate, of course, or candy or anything because his father was completely against it. I think. I think that um, either, I think that this remake worked really well for me, mm-hmm. because either direction worked, whether you didn't know um, Gene Wilder's uh, version mm-hmm. of why um, Willy Walker became where he came from, where he was, and they left that mystery, that worked fine. Mm-hmm. Well, Gene Wilder was such an amazing actor. Yeah, it's such an amazing comedian that that worked fine not knowing and then they did the Johnny Depp version where they did show you that worked great too because now you know okay this is why he became who he is mm. um, and that worked great too so I think this is one of those examples where um, in my opinion where both versions work so well because they were done really well uh, one decided to go in a direction that the other didn't feel, and so they the story it added to the story. It didn't take away from the story. No. Um. So um, we're running a little bit. Uh, we have a little bit like uh, less than ten minutes left. So um, um, the one the few things that I will say about Legend that I did like um, I did like the comic relief of the elves that accompanied uh. <laughs> Uh, that accompanied Jack in the film, and then there there was the character. Oh my goodness, I I might uh, blank out on his name. Uh, the who was like this young boy, and he was and he was like uh, he had like uh dark hair. I I mm-hmm. I'm blanking out on his name. Anyway, oh, I, I forgot his name too. I wish I had remembered. Yeah. Anyway, um... so I uh, anyway. So uh, getting to that, um, I did like the elves because they were sort of like the comic relief of the story, because even though you have the main human characters as the the protagonist, 
Mm -hmm. um, I did like them as the comic relief because it did add some humor to, you know, take away from the dark elements of the story. Mm -hmm. And it was it was all in good fun. And I liked the humorous elements, especially uh, the one elf played in the movie by Billy Barty. And there was another actor. I don't remember his name. He, uh, Brown Tom, as he was referred to in the movie. Yeah. Um, and I thought they were really good in the film uh, by adding like the humor and the something that would take away from the darkness aspect of this story, which I thought was really cool. I do too. Um, there's a lot of layers to this movie, which that's what I liked about, you know, you had your Una who was secretly in love with Jack. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a layer um, that they didn't really show you until you got to the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And you find out that She's been secretly love, been secretly in love with him all this time, creating that love triangle. Um, so there was a lot of layers to this movie. Where you had your horror, your comedy, your fantasy, you had your mm -hmm. love. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it continues to be rewatchable for me. Yes, I can continue to watch it and just keep learning something new. Mm. It, it's good, and I also like the. And I also like the fact that it's a practical effect film, no CG involved. Mm -hmm. It's all optical effects, practical effects, uh, makeup effects are really good. And I also, um, and as you said, I liked the story. It's a very, it has a beginning, a middle and an end, especially with um, in the beginning of the film, there's like this scrolling text that's like comes straight out of a storybook that explains yeah. uh, this, the relationship between darkness and light and Jack and Lilius, the the legends, the heroes of the story, which I thought um, made it as I thought of it. It looked like a storybook. It like looked like a fairy tale storybook as I watched it. I agree, and um, and it, that uh, that's why one of the things about, I loved it so much. Um, I know it's a different movie, but it's kind of like Princess Bride. Yeah, right? um, yeah. I I remembered seeing the film The Princess Bride, so I thought it was. It's in the same vein, it's similar. Um, it, and uh, in that film, you have you have your horror, you have your comedy and your drama, and you have the the fantasy element also added into it. Okay, um, so uh, do you have any last statements to end the show? Like uh, anything to talk about this film or maybe recommendations similar to uh, this movie? Oh, wow. I mean... In terms of recommendation towards this, along in the same vein as this movie, you could take anything from the 80s. That's a whole 80s era. You have your never any story, mm -hmm. The Princess Bride, mm -hmm. um, Krull. Oh, uh, yes. You know, there's so many amazing movies that came out of that 80s era. Um, mm. So, I mean, you could pick, choose any of them, and they're just amazing movies that if any of them were in your favorite movies mm -hmm. I couldn't argue with that because a lot of them was so amazing so great mm. I do um if I were to pick like something similar to this film um and this is just me in general uh the only thing I could think of that was similar to this movie were the dark crystal and labyrinth um by oh, Jim wow. Henson yeah see those two are I was fighting between that and this movie because they're all so good that mm -hmm. we could I could have picked any of those mm -hmm. and I could have spent as much time talking about them as I did with Legends. Yeah, I, I love those movies so much. Yes, um, and they are they are good films from this period too. Well, um, so thank you so much for being on this show. And um, before we uh, finish off. So where would my audience find you just to plug yourself for your show? Um, my podcast is a little defunct. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I I haven't had time to really get into it. Okay. But uh, I'll text you once I get everything back going. I'll text okay. you the information. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, great recommendations and also a wonderful conversation, ladies and gentlemen. Kellen Hare. Uh, Kellen Herb, uh, sorry. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. And I hope that we get to meet each other soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. 
Goodbye. Goodbye.